Hello, my name is DeBuzz, and welcome to Advanced Smash Point number 2. Today I'm going to talk about frame data, and how it relates not only to Smash games, but other fighting games in general. And for anyone who plays in tournaments, watches, Twitch streams, just, or keeps up with the competitive community in general, here is the term frame, frame data, something with the word frame in it, all the time. And it's essentially the meat and bones of fighting games. A frame is a still image. So right here is a frame, if I press L, I'm going to move up frames at a time. If I hold L, I'm going to move up frames. And right here, the game is moving at 60 frames a second because it's normal speed. Now most fighting games are going to move at 60 frames a second, which means each frame is 1 60th of a second. So if you hear someone say a move has 3 frames of startup, that means a move takes 1 20th of a second or 3 60th of a second to come out. And yeah, that's how to count frames. If something has 15 frames of startup, it takes one fourth of a second. If something has 80 frames of startup, that means it would take a second and a third to come out. And this is all assuming it's 60 frames a second, which is the standard for Smash games. And just about every single fighting game, as far as I know. So yeah, I, for this video, on the right side of the screen, you can see... I have a list, this is the list of the currently compiled Smash 4 frame data. It is not complete by any margin, but it has most things regarding move startup, uh, it has hit leg modifiers, which I'll discuss later, it has invisibility frames listed for characters as well, transition frames, it has a lot of good information. I will also be leaving a link to these resources I will be referencing throughout the video in the description of the video. So. If you want to watch the video and like know what I'm looking at exactly, go ahead and watch. But if you just want to listen, if you just want to look at everything at your own rate, etc., the links are there. And I'll just be explaining things. There won't be much to show except what I'm explaining. So to start things off, I will be using Falcon and DDD for this example. And I'm just going to go through Falcon's frame data quickly. Jab is frames 3 5, which means it starts up in frame 3 and has a hitbox until frame 5. And it enables transition to the next jab state in frame 7, which means after the jab hitbox is over in frame 5, I have between frames in 6 and 7 where I can't do anything at all, where essentially it's a jab cooldown. Those two frames, those, uh, what that mean, 1 30th of a second, is where I can do nothing at all until jab 2, until shoot, until I want to do something else. So I do jab 1, jab 2. That means. Jab 2 takes 5 frames to start out. It's 5 frames to come out. So, between the end of Jab 1 and the start for Jab 2, there is a 7 frame window because of a 2 frame transition state and then 5 frame starter. And it works the same if I did Jab 3. So, 1, 2, 3. Jab 2 is frames 5 to 7, or it's out for 1 20th of a second. And then transition state is on frame 9. So, I have 2 frames between frame 7 to frame 9 where I can't do anything, and then Jab 3 would come out of frame 6, meaning that is an 8 frame delay between Jab 2 and Jab 3. And if I did the multi hit jab, I believe that's even one more frame to make it 9 frames. Yep, repeating jab end. Oh, wait, no, that is actually the end of the repeating jab. Which would mean I think if I did jab, 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 I just held it. Let's see if we can get that. I think that would mean at the end of the jab when I let go of the jab when I stop mashing the jab button, it would be between the last hit of the multi jab and then the actual last hit of the jab. Which is why a lot of repeating jabs can be blocked. Because, for example, this repeating jab here, it's frame 7. And that means that from the last hit of the multi hits of my jab to the ender hit, there are 7 frames so my opponent can do something. Now, they're being hit. And there and hit some this can be less frames, but with shielding being two frames in this game, that means as long as I can like have that two frames where they're not hit stun or where they're not on the ground where they can just shield, they can block the less hit of the multi hit jab. Which is an example of why frame day is important because now we know this, we understand why certain moves, certain multi hits can be shielded. Despite you hitting someone with it, because there's not a hit leg. 
compared to how long it takes for the file head to come out of the multi jab. So continuing with Falcon's moves, you can see dash tech frame 7 to 9, which means it comes out of frame 7. And then frame 7 to 9 is a strong hit. But then the move actually has another hitbox from frame 10 to 16. And it's the same move, but that's the weak hitbox or the ending hitbox. You see there, 6 damage is the ending hitbox as opposed to 10 damage from the start hitbox. And so that means dash tech effectively has a hitbox from frame 7 to 16. Forward toe is frames 9 to 11, nothing special. Up toe is frames 17 to 20. There is one other interesting thing though about this. Listen to frame data is ground target only and aerial target only. So next to frame data for this game is the knockback. And so ground target only means this is the knockback angle and distance if you hit someone on the ground. So it sends them forward, but if you hit someone while they're jumping in the air, or, or in the air in general, this move, you see it spikes. It sends that completely downwards angle as opposed to cross. And now, for this, this move, it's only set frame 17 to 20, it only depends on where the opponent is. But a lot of moves have sweet spots or s timings where if you hit them at a certain timing, like knee for example, if I get that hit of knee, it's going to be tip if I hit him with the start of the knee. It's a strong hit, and you can figure this stuff out by looking at the frame data. That's exactly how this stuff is based off of. You can see, see down to those frames 11 to 12, forward smash is frames 19 to 22, up smash is frame 22 to 28. And you can also see there's a smash charge window on these smashes. So what this means for forward smash when it says smash charge window on real frame 12, this means that when you press C6 in a direction or you use a button when you just start the forward smash you cannot start charging until the 12th frame of this move in other words when you see someone charging this move you're charging this move you know when you let it go the actual move will be out in 10 frames more or one sixth of a second so, which can be immensely helpful in timing smash attacks because the move might have say a charge window where it's 20 frames from the extra hitbox which means it's much shorter the time than a move that's 10 frames from the extra hitbox when you charge and let go and yeah, down smashes frames 19 and 20. Rocket time. Rocket time. So down frame, south smashes frames 19 and 20, and then 29 to 30. What this means actually is that the hitbox for down smash is two hitboxes, not consistent as you can see here. Or the front hitbox is 19 to 20, and then the back hitbox is 29 to 30. They have different damage, different knockback, even different hit lag. 1.2 hit lag, as this is for down smash, means that you take the normal hit lag, which I do not know the actual hit lag number yet for. You take the normal amount of frames where if someone is hit, they're in hit lag or hit sun, they can be comboed. And you multiply that by 1.2 or add 20% extra time to that, and that's how much hit lag down smash gives someone on the back hits. And then you get into aerials. And aerials are a bit interesting. Because not only do you have that, the numbers of you know multi hits, frame data, etc., but you have auto cancel windows. So for example here, for neutral air enables transition to narrow landing state on real frame four. What this means is if you land on the fourth frame of pressing neutral air, you have no landing back at all. It's essentially Four sixes of two thirty. So it's one fifteenth of a second timing. Where if you time right, you can let the no lag with the neutral air. But as you can see in neutral air, the hitbox comes out in frame seven, which means the hitbox will not come out because you land with moves early. And then cancels transition to near landing state landing leg on frame thirty two. This is essentially the opposite. Where instead of the hitbox command, you get no landing leg. You get no landing leg way after the hitbox is out because you can see this move ends on frame 21, but then frame 32 is the way if you land, you get no landing leg at all. Where if you landed before that 22 frames, you would get, according to this chart, I will pull up. The left fourth column is neutral air, so if you landed after. Well, if you landed during the move or before the 30th 
30 second frame to move. You'd have 12 frames of landing leg before you can do anything at all. Just 12 frames where you're completely stuck doing nothing. As opposed to 0 frames. Forward air is the same thing. As you notice here with forward air on the weak hit of the forward air, there is a 0.2 hit leg multiplier, which is basically means you multiply the hit leg by 0.2, where you take away 80% of the hit leg, and that's how much time it takes before your opponent can do something after being hit by the move. Which also means you probably don't want to hit someone with a kill the move, because they can do something very quickly out of that for sure. And on the ground. Opposed to this, which actually gives you extra hit leg, which might mean you can combo out of it. And yeah, so all this stuff is kind of very weak frame data. Down air, 18 frame, 60 frames of startup, so 16 frames until this comes out. You can't actually land it, land with no leg, using it until frame 39, which is almost two thirds of a second. And then the landing leg on the actual downer is uh, 21 frames, which means that you land before the third enough frame window. You have 21 frames where you can't do anything, which is enough time for a lot of people to down smash you, grab you, etc. And so you try to find these numbers with the landing leg on these areas that have low cooldown, have earlier windows of auto cancel, all that stuff. You look at a grab or a dash grab, you notice. Grab is 7 8 frames, or it comes out frame 7, it's out for 2 frames. Dash grab is the same thing, so it comes out in frame 9. And etc. Also, one other thing about these enable transition on frames, whatever, is okay, for grabs, I'm not sure how it works exactly, but for like the jab or multi hit forward toss, something like that, that means that not only is it when you can go to the next part of the move, next jab. That's also when you can cancel the move, so that's when you can cancel the move into a jump, into a shield, into a roll, into a side B or something. That's just the cancel window for the move. Essentially, think of it as the grounded version of an auto cancel. Or after that time frame, no leg for do anything else. Even the throws have frame data, see, see forward throw has well, it's 12 frames before it's over, essentially, 13 frames before back throw is over, etc. And this is important in doubles, so you find a throw, like down throw for example, two frames. Two frames before down throw is over. If you're fighting someone in doubles, you have to choose between any throw before you get hit, down throw. Because, that doesn't look like two frames, but the data says it is, but compared to up throw, which is 11 frames you can get hit in, this gives you two frames before you can be hit. Well, two frames where you can be hit with no retaliation at all. So in doubles, that's amazing to know. In fact, I need to know about that until right now. You find out now that Falcon Punch, 53 frames. Uh, yeah, 53 frames, so uh, almost a full second for that move to come out. That's why people won't get hit by that much. And etc. And so, anyone paying along, paying attention with this, can understand kind of why this is important, because now you have an idea of how fast Falcon moves are. You can tell that his jab is his fastest move on frame 3, his falcon punch is his slowest move. Aerial wise, his up air was his fastest aerial. His down air was his down air and his forward air both his slowest aerials. Found that neutral air has two hitboxes and isn't one lasting hitbox. Found that bear has a good auto cancel window. If you want to just land with no leg of doing air dodge, you can go use bear because that's five frames. Same with forward air actually. And yeah, in fact, I didn't even know I could use forward air as an auto cancel movement to right now because there's the same amount of window, oh, the same window for his no landing leg as back air. Oh, so where this comes into play is when you're fighting other people. Obviously, it's good that moves are faster than others, but knowing, for example, I fought Falcon and they are trying to dash grab me, I could grab, jab them. And because their dash grab starts on frame 9 my jab's on frame 6, they have to input their dash grab to 7 frames before I input my jab in order to beat me. Or in other words, they have to input a move 7 sixtieths of a second before I input it. And I have 7 sixtieths of a second to react to that move and punish it by just pressing A. 
And if I did forward smash, I'd actually hit this flange where I have to input a move 10 frames earlier and hit it with forward smash if they tried grabbing me. And if they were just pressuring me with something that was fast, I could jab them out of it as opposed to forward smash, up B, etc. And so, that's what's so important about frame data is it gives you this knowledge of what moves you can do and what moves you can't do in certain situations. And frame data is also why you can combo. So for example, I know down throw is two frames. I can do down throw into neutral air. And combos. If I don't mess it up. If I do not mess this move up, it combos. So that's another thing though, that's why you can see neutral air combos because you just have hit leg on the first move. Hit neutral air. That the opponent can't do anything by the time the second move comes out if they're in the area where the second move will hit. So, right there, I did down throw up there. Guaranteed combo according to frame data because by the time I can't do anything after getting hit by a down throw, all I can already do an up air before they can do anything at all. And now, I don't know how much hit legs on these moves, it might be more than 10 frames, it looks like it because up air is 9 frame startup, I believe. I'm gonna check them and down frame. Only two frames. I'm not sure if there's actually cooldown that, but it doesn't seem like there is. It seems like you can act immediately out of it. Yeah, six frames start up enough here, so. Including the dash, which is a couple frames as well, probably. That means I can combo this thing because it's an eight frame window. And that's how combos work. That's why you can't do a combos like down throw into forward smash. Or even down throw into your after boost. Because by the time someone could use, by the time that hits, someone could jump out of that. And so, that's good by frame data. If someone's pressuring you, so, if I am fighting, actually, let's say I'm Falcon, I'm fighting DDD. I use DDD because he's the next character on this uh, list. And I'm trying to pressure DDD. I'm gonna look through his moves and see what moves are fast and get an idea of how much I can pressure him and how much I can disrespect him. I found his jab is frame 10, dash attack frame 26, furrow toe frame 12, up tilt frame 9, down tilt frame 6. So that's respect down tilt. Smashes are a lot of frames. 7 frame neutral air, 13 frame forward air, 10 frame up air. Grab is frame 7. And so I know now looking at this frame data that. DDD's fastest move is a down tilt at frame 4. Which means not only do I have those 3 frames where you can't do anything except shield or spot dodge or roll or whatever, but that means that because it's a down tilt, I can look for DDD starting to crouch. And if I see him crouching, I know he can do that move. Which is another good thing about frame data. If you know that you don't have to worry about anything except that down tilt and fighting DDD, and you know to look for him starting to crouch. You know you can just shield and punish that every time reaction. Shield is two frames in this game. Which also means you have a two frame window to punish that down tilt on reaction. We do nothing. Um so if you're pressuring DDD, jabbing him, you know if he doesn't attack you attack the same exact time. If you jab at the time he doesn't attack, you will always beat him. Every single time, you know, jab him right before his attack. If you shield, that would beat you because shield's two frame. But that's it. And now I'm going to get into a more advanced topic of frame data, which is frame traps of two different types. First is pressure frame traps. So I kind of went over this briefly right now with the Falcon and DD example. But so let's say I hit DDD with neutral air frame one, or first move, hit neutral air. He gets knocked up in the air and he is hit leg. By the time he lands, my landing leg is already gone, but he doesn't have enough time to do anything before landing. Or in other words, he's stuck landing after neutral air, where I can do something to him. And he has enough time to shield. Oh, in this case, he can't shield the neutral air. That's interesting. Because there's enough lag on him landing, he can't shield the neutral air. But if I do this, can't shield that at all. Interesting, but... Okay, let's use up air then. So, I up air him at 0%. Okay, that also combos. Um, 
<laughs> oh, what else is there? Oh, back here is a good example. So let's say I back here DD at low percent. Hit him with this back here. And you're gonna get knocked off ledge because I did it too close to the ledge. So hit him with this back here. By the time we both are finished with our animations, he's finished being hit son, I am finished landing. Let's just say that I landed and got my animation was like a cool was over before he was out of his son, but before I could combo him with a guaranteed jab. What this means is let's just say the frame data said this is two frames before you can do anything out of this out of this situation. Well, all the hit leg, all my landing leg, all this stuff said there's two frames before anything could happen on his part. This means that I just say one frame because otherwise it'd be guaranteed jab. So let's just say it's one frame before you can do anything. This means if I were to turn around jab immediately, my jab would hit him on his frame too, because his frame one won't exist due to the leg. So that means his only option to stop my jab would be to shield. So if he does anything besides shield, I hit him. Because as we already established, his only his fastest move is frame four down tilt. And now, if he shields, he's fine. He gets shield in frame zero. And then, that's it. I jab the shield. This also means, though, knowing this, knowing that he has no options except shielding, I can mix it up by just turning around grabbing, which is, I believe it was frame seven for Falcon, maybe frame six. Actually, let me check. I believe it'll be after special news. Nope, it's before special news. So I did this grab, frame 7. Because DD is in life for one frame, that means that in this example I created, which is not pretty like accurate, that I have, well he has six frames to react to and not get caught by my grab. So he can do a down tilt here to stop me from grabbing, he could even do I believe a forward tilt with six frames. So he has options to attack me, but only his fastest options would stop me from grabbing him. And if he shielded then let go of shield and try to do something, I'll grab melee because if he shielded, two frames of shield. And then I believe it's probably like two frames of shield drop. And so he'd have two frames after the two frames of shield and then two frames of dropping the shield to do something. And he only can shield again in those two frames, I believe. I'm not sure what the role of spot dot frames are, but in this scenario, let's just say they're not two frames. Because that means knowing DD only has two frames to do something, if he were to shield at all, my grab's guaranteed on him. Every time. And so that's an example of like a frame trap where you get guaranteed foul that isn't a combo, but it's a mix of your opponent has to respect and read and punish. And if you read him correctly, you can punish him. And if you don't want to take a risk, you can just jab him. Because the jab only has. If you look at the transition data on the jab again, you can find that Falcon's jab. If you just jab one, he has. His jab starts frame three, ends in frame five. Transitions on frame seven. What that means is. From frame 5 to frame 7, he can't do anything, but afterwards, he can do whatever he wants. So you could just do a jab into shield, and that would be a 4 frame maneuver, because it would go. Jab. Gets blocked. Don't do anything. Shield. Hold the shield, actually. Frame 4, shield's out. You know what else comes out in frame 4? D to D's fastest move. Down tilt. And the only way you can punish that is with a grab, which he could do. But the idea is your jab is essentially safe. You might do a rollout in time. By his grab comes out, by the time his grab comes out. You might just be able to shield, then roll. And yeah, nothing that you can do to stop you in that situation. And then of course you could just do jab one to jab two, so he thinks you're gonna drop your shield, or you could start a shield and he drops his shield. You can just jab again, and then now because he dropped the shield because you tried to do something to punish you for starting your shield up. 
or he tried punishing you for uh, not succeeding in the jab. I got punished. That's another thing, by the way, about knowing the frame data is now I know that if I jab DDD once on his shield, there's nothing he can do to punish me guaranteed. He has absolutely no way to punish jab into something else or jab into shield. No way at all. If he had three frame jab, okay, he probably do punish that. But because he has a four frame down tilt, he can't. And that's extremely good knowledge to have. Same thing works if I do a jab two and a shield, I can cancel that two frames after the move is over into something. And this is where pressure comes in. This is why a character like Falcon is so hard to deal with for characters on the fastest moves because not only are his moves fast, which means he can oftentimes just beat an opponent try to throw moves that they're slower, but even if they block his move, he has fast mix up where he can just cancel and jab and keep doing jabs. He can do jab into grab, which would be like a nine frame maneuver. He has all these different options. That was so fast compared to his opponent in this scenario, which is DDD. Whereas if he was fighting another Falcon, he'd have to reset a frame three jab and acknowledge that his jab into his shield is actually not safe by one frame. And so, another example of how frame data works for you is, I talked about using that for pressure. I didn't factor in shield sun, which, shield sun is a thing, but we don't know, I don't know the exact numbers on it yet, come on, hit sun. Shield sun, for example, might be four frames, where if someone blocks an attack, like jab, maybe, maybe like a king DD drops, king DD blocks, Falcon's jab. Maybe he has four frames of shield sun where he can't do anything for four frames while shielding. And after those four frames, he can do whatever he wants again. And Falcon, for example, might have five frames, which means if he hits a shield with that jab, he actually has five frames before he can do anything with that jab, which means in this scenario, instead of having four frames for DD to punish and therefore have no guarantee to punish, because Falcon has one extra frame of shield block disadvantage or in other words he goes positive a frame negative frame whatever you call it either way he's a frame later than DD and acting is actually five frames before he can do anything after jab and DD shield before DD can do something so DD can do shield drop down to for example except for the fact that in this scenario with DD it might take two frames for shield drop to happen so even though technically there's five frames that punish he needs something out of shield that's five frames. And if he drops a shield and it takes two frames, there will be three frames before a down tilt. There will be three frames where he can do something. And down tilt has four frames, which is not enough before jab. Falcon can just jab him again or do something like shield. And yeah. That is how the frame data works. That's how pressure works. I think, well, I know this data is all going to be updated and put into the, uh, the list I'm looking at later on. So I'm just trying right now to explain how you utilize this knowledge to advantage and how you figure out these setups and situations you can take advantage of or even just know if in one of these situations your options left the options that if you did in this scenario what you can do in these situations and yeah and this applies to all fighting games this isn't just smash this is this is how rush on characters in fighting games work this is how characters who are brand defense work this is just how you understand essentially which characters are good in which situations in fighting games because you can know what the options are up close, up far, how good they are pressuring, how many mix-ups have the FS. For example, if Falcon only had a frame 3 jab and all his other moves are say frame 15, you know the only thing you have to respect up close is jab. And you know, for example, because jab is only a move that's quicker than frame 15, you can just hit him with something farther away from jab. If it's like a frame 10 throw toe, for example, with DDD. And you always would beat that jab easily because as long as he outspaces his jab, he has anything that can beat your forward tilt, assuming his other moves were frame 15 and DD's F tilt is frame 10. And this is how situation awareness works. This is how, if DD, if like Falcon is here, I know his only options to cover this distance immediately are going to be dash grab, Falcon kick, and side B, which are all slower than frame 3. So I can throw out those F tilts as DD and punish him, because my F tilt is frame 10. I can down tilt, and that's frame what? I think 4 we said? 6? I believe it's frame 4. And yeah, that's how it works. And one other thing I want to talk about is, so that was a frame trap where it's just a setup into pressure. 
I want to talk about frame traps that are guaranteed hits. So air dodging in this game. Every character's air dodge has 22 frames of landing. Like, if you land with the air dodge, 22 frames per anything. That's it. 22 frames. And then I have to do something fast after 22 frames. And so if I would air dodge here, DD would get a free forward tilt, me a free down tilt, a free up tilt even. You get a free forward, you get all those options on me because it's 22 frames a leg. But what he wouldn't get, let's see what he would and wouldn't get according to his frame data. So I'm looking for 22 frames or less. So he gets up smash, which is frame 17. He gets down smash, which is frame 14. He does not get forward smash, though, which is frame 42, which actually gives me 18 frames to do something before forward smash would come out. Even acknowledging this two frame start up and shield, three frame start up and jab, that is 16 frames where I have a leniency to shield forward smash. If he does as soon as my air land with air dodge. Obviously, he can do the forward smash early, reading my air dodge landing, and try to punish me there. But he has to do it about 16 frames earlier than my actual air dodge. And he got a guaranteed punish on me. Which I can react to by jumping or just not air dodging even. Which is why forward smash is not a good move really, because it's so long you have to predict your opponent's move it so well, where a down smash. You can do it on reaction to that move, you can do it in prediction by charging it up. Do so many things. What I want to talk about here is Falcon's up air. Falcon's up air, I just talked about before, was six frames. Six frames start up and it saves out to frame 12. And if we look at the landing leg on that move, there's only nine frames landing leg. And next you know, air dodge is at 22 frames. So what that means is if I throw DDD up here. I'm going to wait for the land. Let's just pretend here he air dodges. Let's just pretend I upgrade him and he air dodged in that situation. Right through him upwards and he had to land. If he air dodges, because my move is so fast, my move comes out frame 6. Actually, let me pull this up again. So my move comes out in frame 6. Which means he has to be air dodging that by frame 6. And then my move would auto cancel if I landed on frame 24 after. That means if I did an up air and landed after the 24 frame window, say 25 or 26 frame, I could do a jab afterwards because there is, let's just say 26 for example. Air dodges avoids the up air on the earliest frame possible to frame 6. And he lands as a landing leg. I am out of cooldown by frame 26. There's two frame advantage for me. Two frames where he can't do anything and I can do something. And his first thing he can do is on frame 4, which is shield. Meanwhile, the first thing I can do is frame 3, jab. So I have a guaranteed jab in him because he air dodged my up air. Guaranteed every single time. And if I would even do it a little bit late, different the time where if I landed. Sam frame 14. After the hitbox is gone for two frames, so I land on frame 14 here. He air dodged it again. Because I have nine frames of landing leg with this move, that means I can act by frame 23. Which actually means I even have a more, more time to jab him. I can probably grab him in that time before I can do anything. So yeah. So regardless, the moment he had the air dodge up there, he was guaranteed to give me a hit. And obviously though, we didn't air dodge, you get hit by up air. So the only option you have in this situation is try challenging it. But the chance of challenging this up air and the situation I'm going to use it, which is him above me or in front of me, or even a little bit behind me, is so low with his moves all being slow in the air. Except that blue is forward air was decent, but the cover is above him. So he has no options to cover below him that are fast enough to hit me if I do an up air. Which is a guaranteed, which means it's a guaranteed frame trap. And a lot of characters have this in Smash games, this is how, and Brawl, if anyone remembers that game, Meta Knight was able to dominate characters. He had frame two up there, with I think like two frames lag as well, and no landing lag. So 
In other words, there was a four frame window to punish Meta Knight for using up air over and over and over. Which is why that move just beat pretty much everything above him for free. I'm not sure about other characters. I th Definitely other frame traps though. I know Sheik has stuff like that with the forward air. Due to the lag on that move. And yeah. If you look at a character, you find what you can do with that. You can probably find a lot of good air traps with that. You can probably do smashes. Like if I was... To do the air dot, the up air, and do the air dodge it. The air dodge, let's say, on frame 11 of my up air hitbox, and then I land on frame 13. He has a 22 frame landing lag I had, so he air dodged it. Well, let's just say he landed on frame 14 because he still has to land after air dodging. Actually, let's say he landed on frame 20 after air dodging. He was a bit too high in the air. And then, I started getting landing lag at frame 14. At 9 frames of landing lag to that, that's frame 23 before I can do anything. And frame 42 before DDD can do anything. So there's a 19 frame window here, where DDD cannot do anything at all after avoiding my up air. After making the correct call in the situation to not get hit. So 19 frames, according to this data, is not enough for an up smash. But it's enough for both a forward smash and a down smash. A kill percent, so that'd be a guaranteed step to kill someone. And that's exactly what I want to look for. That is where frame data becomes really useful, is knowing the exact things you can punish with and the exact steps you can go for. And this is why I call consider frame data an advanced topic. Not only is it hard to read, you have to do a lot of math with the timings of it. Calculations, gifts to factor in many things. Stun, lag. The opponents, options, all that stuff, your options. You have to factor in the situations as well. Because that's not going to matter if you up air someone and they're like, have to stage away from you because you have to up air them, they're going to air dodge, you have to be able to run and grab them or dash check them. From halfway across the stage, you have to air dodge. Or if someone's shielding and you forward tilt them, it doesn't matter that your jab is frame 3. Because you're not close enough to hit someone with the jab after forward tilting their shield. Let's just say, or forward smashing their shield. And that's why well, you have to factor in so many things. But knowing this, knowing your character, looking at their frame data will tell you a lot. And one last thing I want to go over before I'm done with this video is invisibility frames. Now, I'm going to find Mario in this file if I can. Because I know Mario's up smashes invisibility frames. So. Oh, yeah, not before, damn it. So, look at Mario's up smash. Frame 9 to 12 is a hitbox. Smash window is on frame 7. But look at this. Begins partial invincibility. I don't need sound more. Begins partial invincibility on frame 9. Ends partial invincibility on frame 13. What that means is Mario has invincibility during his up smash. During the actual hitbox up smash, frames 9 to 13, that's so the one frame after it actually, he is completely invincible. It means you cannot challenge him. If you see him coming out and you try attacking him from above, where his hitbox is, every single time you will not hit him and he will hit you. Or you will not hit him and he won't, he won't hit you. Either way, you cannot challenge that move. And. Knowing a character's invisibility is good. If knowing Mario's invisibility is good, I'm sure everyone's realized he has something with his up smash, where it's hard to challenge that move. But if you didn't know what it was, and you just assumed he has invisibility, you wouldn't really want to like, mess with it. But I know now, by looking at this data, that if I use an attack that hits Mario before his up smash comes down in frame 9, every single time I would beat that move, because his invisibility frame starts when his hitbox starts. And now I know that if I can't hit him before his hitbox is going to come out, now I have to challenge it. And everyone who watches this video should get an idea of what your character's situations like that are. Their invincibility frames, learn to abuse them. This is for all fighting games, not just Smash games. And with that, that is in my video. I hope this gives whoever's watching ideas of how to use frame data, how to at least calculate frame data, how to understand situations. Especially when there's more frame data available for this game, like shield stun, hit lag, 
rolling, etc. When that's all done and compiled into one organized list, this would be an extremely good video to look at and be able to like use to figure things out. I know this is also a very long video, and that's just the nature of something so complicated as frame data. With that, I am out until the next video. Thank you for watching.